Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about the lead codes number 477, total Hamming distance. Now, this is a problem that I solved right after solving number 461 Hamming distance, which I showed in a previous video. And uh, I thought that it's directly related to it. That's my first approach. That uh, That's how I tried to solve it initially. So here I had... Uh, I found a solution to find the Hamming distance, and here in 477, I want to find the total Hamming distance. So if I have three elements in an array, I'm going to find the, the Hamming distance between the first and second, the first and third, and then move on to find the distance between the second and third, and return the sum. So a quick reminder of what the Hamming distance is. It's the number of different bits between two different integers. So here I have one and one. These are similar bits and therefore they aren't different. Here I have one and zero. These are different. I have zero and one. These are different. I have here also zero and one. And here I have different bits as well. So these are different bits. That, therefore I have a sum of four. Previously I performed uh, XOR operation and then I counted the number of ones that resulted from it because if I perform XOR operation if I have one and one it will result in a zero one and zero will result in one also zero and one will result in one so different bits will result in one similar bits will result in zero my initial thought here then is to solve using where I ended last time where I finished. So I'm going to uh, create a class. And in this class, I'm going to declare uh, some variables in the main just to test with them. I'm going to declare an array. I'm using the same numbers as the example that's on lead code. And I'm going to print out the result of uh, finding out the total Hamming distance. So I'm going to type sys out, control enter, and find and print the result of total Hamming distance for nums. In our case, we have an array. So we have uh, these bits. And I'm going to find first the difference between these two. So I'm going to XOR them. This will result in uh, two different bits here and here. So I have two. And then I'm going to take uh, this one and this one. And here also I have a different bit here and a different bit here. So this is 2 plus 2. That's the result. And that's how I'm going to program my algorithm. And finally, I'll move to this one. So I started here and compared everything that's afterward. And then I moved to the next element and compared everything that comes afterward. So between this one and this one, I have two different bits here. And I'm going to add them to the total Hamming distance as well. This will result in six. So let's program accordingly. I need a variable that stores the total Hamming distance. I'll call it total Hamming and I'll initialize it to zero. I also need uh, a for loop to traverse all of these uh, array elements. So I'll take a for loop and uh, I'll take I inside of this for loop, I'll start from element number zero because if I number them, this is zero, this is one, this is two. These are the element numbers in the array. So I'm gonna start from int i equals zero. This has a length of three, so it's end. So we have zero, one, two. So I'm gonna go till i is less than length, or in fact, nums dot length. And I'm going to increase i with every iteration. And for every i, I'm going to compare this element with all the elements that come afterward. And here I started to form a nested loop. This is increasing the, complex the complexity to n squared. So I have 4. And I need another variable. This time it's called j. And uh, this j will not start at 0. In fact, it will start at the next element that I'm processing. So if I'm processing this one, it will start, if I'm processing index zero, I'm gonna start uh, with j at index one, then move to index two. If I'm processing index one at i, I'm gonna start with j equals two. j equals i plus one, 
j is less than nums dot length and here I need to be careful I need to fix something and I'm gonna increase j now here I'm gonna waste my time to compare uh, the the last two elements and in fact I might face a runtime error as well because if I go to the last element for i and j is i plus one uh, this will cause an error it will cause a runtime error and therefore I need to stop my i index before the last element so I'll add a minus one here I performed the XOR operation just like I did in uh, the previous problem now in the previous problem I took uh, uh, the result of the XOR operation and stored it in X since I won't return to X another time but here since I need uh, the element to be used multiple times I'll create a new variable and store the result of the XOR operation in it so nums i XOR nums j and finally after I perform this operation I'm gonna count the number of bits and add it to the total hamming distance so I'm gonna take the total hamming and add to it integer dot bit count of z and I can write this in a shorter way I'll replace these with, with plus equal it's the same and still I have to return so I calculated total hamming and I have to return it so return total hamming and I should get 6 as an answer I will take this copy it into lead code run it and finally submit it when I submit it I'll get an error it's saying uh, time limit exceeded so the operation was too slow I need to think of another approach to reduce the complexity the calculation complexity let's erase these and think of another approach let's consider another approach and maybe we should think bitwise and here I will have my elements my array elements stacked above each other I have the bits here stacked and if I compare these I have all zeros and uh, they're, they're not different than each other there's no one to be different from them so I have three zeros and zero one and this will result in a zero and here I have one zero and two ones the ones can't be different from each other but they can be different from this zero so I have either two ones different from one zero or I can say it in another way I have one zero different than two ones so I have a result of two and here I have two ones that are different from one zero so that's two again and here I have two zeros different than a one so I have two bits here now let's take a better view let's consider a bigger array and here I filled uh, random zeros and ones they result in these uh, decimal numbers and here again I have one one and one I have these three ones and they are different than two zeros and this results in a total hamming distance of six for this uh, bit so let's number the bits this is zero this is one we have five bits and I numbered them from zero till four. So here I have three ones times two zeros. And this results in six. And here again I have two ones and I have three zeros and this results in two ones that are multiplied by three zeros. Again I have six. And here I have three ones that are different than two zeros so I have three times two this is six here again I have two times three this is six and here I have four ones and they can't be different than one zero so I have four ones that are different than one zero so I have four and if I add these I should get the answer of my algorithm. I think these add up to 28. So we'll try to 
proceed with this uh, method. And here again, I need uh, the total hamming variable and I'll initialize it to zero. And since I'm working with bits, I'm processing this bit and, then, and afterward this bit and afterward this one, I'll take a variable that I'll call bits. So I have a bit, int bit, and I'll start with bit zero again. Now I'm gonna traverse all the bits. Here I have five bits and therefore I'm gonna go from zero till four. So from zero till length, till less than length. And therefore I type while bit is less than the length. Now uh, the numbers that I have, the integers that I have are less than 32 bits. And therefore I'll take while bit is less than 32. And for every bit, as I said before, I'm gonna consider the number of ones in it. So I declare a variable, an integer that's called number of ones. And after calculating the number of ones, I'll find the number of zeros. This will save time instead of uh, filling the number of ones and the number of zeros at the same time. So this is equal to zero. And then, I'm going to process all the elements in the array. So I'm going to take this one, check if there's a one in it, and then I'll move to the next element. There's a one in it. The next element has no one, and this one has one. So uh, I'll move again. I have zero. That's the number of ones. And I add one to it. Then I add one to it. That's two. And then I add one here. That's three. I'll go with this approach, I'll go with four, with the for loop, and I'll start with the first element, that's index zero, and I'll move till i is nums.length, and it's actually less than nums.length, and I'll increase i with every iteration. At this point, I want to find if there's a one in the number that I'm processing or not. So I want to find if the last bit here is a one or no. So let's take a number, let's take this one for demonstration. And I want to find if this one is one. I want to return one if the last bit is one. So my way to do this is using an AND operand. And I'll perform an AND with number one as well. When I have anything that's ANDed with zero, this will result in zero. So these will result in zero anyway. And here, if I have one and I perform an AND with one, this will result in one. It will result in zero if I had zero. I'm going to take the individual element and perform a bitwise AND with one. So here I'm taking individual bits and comparing them. Again, if I have one here and I AND it with one, it will result in one. So I'll take the number of ones, num ones, and add to it the result of this one. Therefore, if I have a zero, num ones will not change. If I have a one, nums one will be incremented by one. But we're not done yet. We want to move to the next bit. We want to prepare our number for the next bit. And therefore, if I ended, let's erase these. I did my first AND here with one. I did AND, and here I had one, and all the rest were zeros. For the next bit, I need to perform this way. So I need to AND with this one, or I can do it in another way. I can shift my elements to the right. So instead of uh, moving the one here, I'll take the elements and shift them to the right. So like this. And if I shift them to the right, these are discarded. I don't have them anymore. And zeros will replace the missing bits. And in the next iteration, I'll take them again. These are lost, in fact. I'll take them again and shift them to the right. These are last, and I have zeros filling here. And again, I'm comparing each bit with AND1. 
and seeing the result. I'll take nums i, that's the individual element in the array, and shift it to the right, like this. This is, uh, in fact, not i, this is one. So this is the shift right uh, operand, and here I specify the number of bits that I want to shift to the right. Now I could have gone with another approach. I could have typed for uh, int num in nums to traverse all the elements in the array, but uh, here uh, this will not alter uh, the original uh, entry. So if I use the shift operand uh, after escaping the for loop, it will return to what it was originally. So if I want to go with this, I need to think of another approach. I'll stick with mine. And after finishing, I want to move to the next bit. I want to in increase my bit counter. So I type bit plus plus. And I want to calculate the number of zeros to find the Hamming distance here. So I create an int, the number of zeros the number of zeros is the length of the array with the ones in it removed, with the number of ones removed. So it's nums.length minus num ones. I found the number of zeros. I already have the number of ones. Now I want to use it to complete my algorithm. So I'm going to calculate my distance by multiplying the number of ones with the number of zeros as I said previously, and I'm going to add the result to the total hamming. So total hamming plus equal num ones times num zeros. And finally, I'm going to return the total hamming. If I run it, this should give me six, and I can make this even shorter by removing this calculation and cutting this one and adding it here. So I remove this, I run it again, it should also give me six, and I'll copy it into read code. I'm gonna put it here, run it, and submit it. After I submit it, I got a much shorter time, I got four milliseconds, uh, whereas uh, before it was saying uh, time limit exceeded, so I got a shorter time, and this is much improved. We explored two methods. We explored a method that's somehow long, but it's detailed. I think uh, anyone uh, can understand it. And then we moved to the other method, and uh, this one is shorter. It's a much better performing one. Thanks for watching.